Hey everybody, so this is a introduction video to using Sonic Pi. If you're watching this, then I assume you have been able to download it successfully. If not, you can refer back to the videos that talk about downloading Sonic Pi on a Mac or Windows, whichever one you are going to be using. Okay, so once you have done that, you will be able to access the application of Sonic Pi somewhere in your computer. If you're using Windows, you can uh, go down to this part and maybe search it if you don't know where it is. I would suggest dragging the icon onto your desktop uh, if you're able to just so you can access it easily when you need to. In a Mac you can go to Finder and that window or search here and it will bring it up. You could write Sonic Pi and it'll come up like that. I've dragged it into my dock so I just need to click the icon and it will open up. You need to give it a few minutes, so don't get impatient, and it may take a little longer depending on the computer that you are running it with. So just give it a moment to boot up, and here we go. So I'm gonna go full screen. So this is the Sonic Pi interface, and that's just the aim of this video. We're not gonna make any code. Actually, I'll get rid of that for later. Uh, but this is just gonna walk you through the different parts of the interface, or what's called the IDE, which is the Integrated Development Environment. And you don't really need to worry about that. Okay, so Sonic Pi is a coding language. So if you're familiar with coding, it's basically we are writing uh, instructions for a computer to follow. Now, lots of coding, it could be coding to design a game, it could be coding for like bank software, coding can be done for a bunch of different things. But in this case, we are gonna be coding to make music. Okay, so this is uh, a text-based language in Sonic Pi. So you see right in here, this window, this big window is our text editor. So Sonic Pi is a text-based coding language, which means you have to type out the instructions that you want the computer to do. If you're familiar with a language called Scratch, that's a block-based language where you connect different blocks to get your program to do stuff, but we are here actually typing words into this. Okay, so I've typed some stuff here. Uh, that's not gonna run anything, that's just a little bit of extra here. So I could just write, uh, you know, hello in my coding editor. Now, you'll find that we need to write very specific things in our text editor in order to get Sonic Pi to do stuff, because uh, if we don't, I'm gonna go up here, this is the run button, so this will run my program, and I'll click it, and right away it gives me this error message, okay? So you can see right here, uh, this is where any errors will come up and it says it doesn't understand this thing hello because hello is not an actual command in Sonic Pi. So you can't just write anything in the text editor and expect it to work and we'll learn what you can and can't write as we go along, okay? But right now we now know that there is a text editor. We also know down here we will see error messages. Don't worry about that. They're gonna happen all the time. Okay, error messages are nothing to get discouraged by. They are gonna happen. They happen to people who code professionally for a living, who've done it for 50, well, not 50, but like 20, 30 years. As long as coding has been around, people make errors and get error messages, okay? Um, down here on the bottom, this is the help window. Uh, so up here you see help, I can click that and it will disappear. I click it and it comes back. There's some lots of great tutorials. So if you wanna sort of explore the tutorials on your own, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm gonna be taking you through some of the stuff we'll cover will be covered in these tutorials as well and I'll try and point you towards those as you can. There's also examples, so you can like copy and paste this code and put it into your text editor and run it and listen to it. Uh, and then there's some things that we may come up on later, but this just tells you a bit more about some of the specific things here in Sonic Pi, and I'll get to those when we need it. Now, personally, it comes up at the bottom. This takes up a lot of space, uh, which I don't necessarily like. So you have the option to click this icon here, and it will pop your window out. So it's actually a separate window when you wanna look at it, and then you press help, and it will just disappear and reappear when you need it. So I'm gonna do that. You can leave it there if you want, but I like to have a bit more space. Now down here we have these numbers, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These are buffers, so these are like pages in a notebook. So I can write some code here, but say I wanna start a different project, I would just go to buffer one, and then I could write. So you see I have some other code in here uh, that I've been working on, and then I go through each one, so I've been busy playing around with stuff, uh, and you can 
sort of have different projects going at once. So if I do something here but want to start something different, I don't have to erase what I had. Okay, you can save it into its own file wherever you want on your computer, but Sonic Pi, when you close it and reopen it, it won't erase your work. Your work will be right back there when you need it. Um, just some other stuff to be aware of. There's the scope is just going to make some cool little graphics when you do have code running. This log is where information about our program will come up uh, that sometimes can be important or good for us to know and be aware of. So know that that will happen and you'll see that as we start to write our programs and this cues thing is just kind of also keeping you up to date with what's happening but there's nothing you really need to worry about there okay um you also have preferences so you can adjust the volume to some degree here uh, in and out, not something you need to worry about the editor i'm going to do this now you can switch to a dark window view here which i am going to do and i'm just going to leave this so all my videos i'm going to leave in the dark mode instead of the light you can make a decision for which one you can try out these others pro or high contrast uh visuals you can play around with as well nothing you need to worry about and updates it if it leave it it'll update itself pretty regularly so then i can hit preferences and get out of that i'm just going to slide this over and one more thing to be aware of the size buttons here so you can shrink it as you start to write more code, it's helpful. I'll maybe go to one of these buffers where I have a lot more code written. So if I zoom out, it's a little small, so maybe I want to find a good, but you can see more of your code at once than necessarily having to scroll up and down quite a bit to do that. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. So again, just show you I write hello. It doesn't like that, but that is what goes on. So in the next video, uh, I'll show you the first couple commands we can write and we'll start making music in Sonic Pi.